One mother's rage. Local government representatives have finally shown up to talk to Ayako Yagashi, her husband and two young children, months after a horrific discovery at their apartment complex. This brand new building's foundation is radioactive. The city's experts found a level 10 times higher than average exposure in Japan. But this city is supposed to be in a safe area, 40 miles away from the so-called danger zone around the Fukushima nuclear plant. So how did this happen? This cement came from this quarry, just miles from the crippled nuclear plant. When the triple meltdown happened, radiation rained down on the quarry. The radioactive rock was then shipped across the country and used to build this apartment building. Residents from the first floor have all moved out. But Yaigashi lives on the third floor, where the government keeps trying to tell her it's safe. Do you feel nervous even just standing out here? Hmm. Yes, I'm worried, says Yaigashi. Radiation is invisible. It could be airborne right now. It could be coming out of the ground. We don't know. It's not just the apartment building. The contaminated rock from the quarry made its way to nearly a thousand different locations across this entire region. It's right under my feet in this new section of this little canal. Just an example of how radiation from the Fukushima nuclear disaster has worked its way into ordinary life here in Japan. Radiation tainted straw was fed to cattle, which became tainted beef that ended up in supermarkets and restaurants across Japan. Radioactive particles flew across the country and landed on green tea fields in South Japan, which ended up in teacups. And airborne radioactive particles appeared to have entered a baby formula factory, formula which ended up on store shelves. All these scares have led to the opening of nearly 100 independent storefronts across Japan, where residents like Yuki Kubo can test food and soil for radiation. I can't believe the government. I don't believe them, she says. We have to protect ourselves. That's what we've learned from Fukushima. Japan's government is constantly monitoring radiation in the air, ground and water on a local and national level. But Ayako Yaigashi is a living example that the government can't control the spread of radiation everywhere. Never listen to what the government tells you, she says. If you do, you'll pay. She and her family go back inside with little relief from the government. They'll try to handle this crisis on their own. Kyung Law, CNN, Nihomatsu, Japan.